Who has the longest winning streak for any power conference team in the nation heading into this season? The answer, the Northwestern Wildcats won their last eight games last season, including their third bowl win in their last four appearances. Nice complement of starters back on both sides of the ball, though some big names have departed, including the third leading rusher in Big Ten history in Justin Jackson. The head coach of the Wildcats, Pat Fitzgerald, is with us now. And, Coach, let's start with your big news from the summer. You guys moved into your new facility. Yahoo has called it the best facility in the country. How does it change your program? Well, the efficiency of the day-to-day, -day, the way we run everything, Rever, is completely changed. I'll give you, for example, our first summer workout, our strength coach got everything done 20 minutes early. You know, so you, you put that over a course of a week now, that's more treatment, more practice, more meetings. You know, that's just the micro. The macro, obviously, is recruiting, the connectivity to campus, the availability for our guys to get right to class after practice gives us a chance to have a little bit more time on the clock. So we'll find out this fall. I mean, we, we've only been in there for five, five and a half weeks, but it's been absolutely spectacular. Coach, your thoughts about not only starting with a tough game, but a conference game. I don't know that that's happened very much in the Big Ten. And on the road. And on, you like it or you don't like it? Uh, I, would, I would much rather play my high school. Yeah, this is a huge challenge. <laughs> yeah. You know, it goes back to, you know, we've played some, you know, power five teams on the road right. in the past. And it's, it's daunting, without a doubt. And the job that Jeff and his staff have done in West Lafayette, a very talented football team, we, it's a great motivator for us. There's no doubt. We know what we're getting into. It's going to be a tough night. Um, but I'm glad that we're playing on Thursday night. You know, we get a couple days early that we can come in, uh, give us some rest before we go into week two. Uh, and it also keeps us off Friday. You know, I think the change of playing non-traditional days I'm fine with, but I'd prefer to keep them off Friday. And to fulfill that was a Thursday night game, I'd be fine doing from now on. Even when we have our home opener, I'd be fine doing that. The big picture for the conference, it, if it wasn't you, maybe, is it a good thing for the, for the fans and for the country to open with a league game? I, I, you know, as a fan first, I love it. Yeah, yeah and I'm, I, you know, we got to win, so I get it. But I think it's great. I think the more that we can get Big Ten games on, allows our fans to see us, the better off it's going to be for everybody. And the exposure for our, our program, Purdue's program, our players, the conference, it's a win-win for everybody, and it should be a, an electric atmosphere. Coach, I want to take you back to the facilities for a moment, and we talked about the student-athletes, what a benefit it is for them. But how about the coaching staff? What are some of the things that you are able to do as a coaching staff by being in that new facility? We'll hopefully be more efficient with our time, and once we get that time down where we know exactly how long it takes. So again, I'll go back. We went to camp. We're used to having a, a, a smaller indoor we got, I'm used to having coaches on top of each other, making sure the logistics are handled the right way. Now all of a sudden we go into the Ryan Fieldhouse on Wilson Field, and I got guys standing on top of each other in 75 yards of space <laughs> over to our left. <laughs> so we're learning. Yeah. You know, we're learning. You've been out to practice. We've got, you know, two huge fields on the lakefront. Um, I think after this year, I'll be able to tell you this time next yeah. year, we figured out all the bugs. But very happy we were able to get in there before the dedication on August 1st to be able to work through some of the nuances to get ready to go when we start the season. You said more than once that your team will go as far as your offensive line can take it, yep. and they sure improved last year. What do you attribute their development and their improvement to? I think Adam Cushing did a great job of, of finding the five that were finally on the same page. Uh, you know, we were a work in progress early. You know, I think Rashawn Slater was a big answer. You know, when he really finally took that next step at right tackle, the revolving door ended on that right side of the offensive line. Things became more cohesive. And, uh, you know, I, I still feel like we have solid competitive depth, but when that five finally came together, you know, we definitely improved. A new voice in the secondary. It's going to change. Coach Brown's not there. How's that been, that transition? Well, Matt McPherson's our new secondary yeah. coach, and, and he was actually a GA for Jerry back when I was an assistant coach and my GA for, for a year. And I'll just say this. Look at the job he did in our running back room. That's enough said. The guy can coach. He's a defensive guy. He was a defensive coordinator before Randy brought him back to stat on our staff as a running back coach. And for about a decade now, Matt and I have been talking about getting him over to defense. No one's left. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, with Randy Bates, you know, now getting the D.C. job at Pitt, which we're ecstatic for him uh, to take that next step professionally. He's already been a coordinator now to go back to that. You know, I hate to see Randy leave and J.B. retire. But, you know, and you know this, Coach, sometimes that change is a great opportunity for growth, and I think we've grown quite a bit as a staff. It's been a fun offseason for me. I was amazed that you made it through your media availability earlier, and <laughs> nobody asked you about Clayton Thorson. You're not going to get off that 
easy. Well, I figured they expected my response to be like Coach Saban's last week, you know? I mean, <laughs> how about that? I didn't see that. It's all your fault. Yeah. The, the media's exactly. fault. That's why there's a quarterback controversy. Right. That's, that's, so blame it on Reverend. No, no, no doubt. Doubt. I'm I'm just doubt. Doubt. Wait a while. Yeah. These guys are fully behind you if you want to blame yeah. it on me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All he could control is the way he responded mentally. He's been phenomenal. Then goes to his rehab. He's been inspiring. I mean, it has been fun to watch how hard he has worked to get his, himself ready for camp. He'll be on a pitch count starting next Wednesday when we get going. And then that'll be our roadmap as we kind of go for the next two to three weeks. If everything goes according to plan, you guys will be the last to know just after Purdue finds out, you know, <laughs> whether or not he's starting the opener. His goal has been to start the opener. He'll get himself where it needs to be. Then it'll go on the medical team. But with a guy with his type of future, we're going to be a day late, a week late, a month late, then a day early, a week early, or, or, or a month early. He's a first-round talent. He's a guy that I think is going to play on Sunday for a long time. We'll see how it goes. That competition that started in the spring, we add Jason Whitaker to the mix now, a true freshman that's been here for the summer. We'll see how that is not only ready for the Purdue game, but also for the whole season. But the time that Clayton has is a normal time, right? It's not, is, is it any shorter than? No, it, it, no it's, it's not. It, it's it's about, right about, right, it's, it's about it's right, you know. You should expect someone back. That could has it be a, a week earlier? Could it be a week later? Yes. I mean, it's right but about it's not, that time. It's not a crazy short time. Are Absolutely. You trying to get not. him to commit right now? No, no, I'm just, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm, sure, he's playing in the opener. Like, let's just go there. <laughs> let's go there, and then the rest will be history. And then, you okay. know, we're going to have transparent uh, injury reports only oh, in Northwestern. Yeah. Right. No one else is going to have to do that just at our place. I, first of all, just let's, this is our first day back. We're supposed to gang up on him. Okay, okay. I'm my fault. No, no, no. No. <laughs> he and I gang up on you. Have <laughs> no. you been watching for the last 11 years? And you make it very easy for us. Well, so what, what does it say about, while we're on the topic of quarterbacks, what does it say about your program that you were able to attract a talent the caliber of Hunter Johnson? You know, everything happens for a reason, I believe, in life. And I had the great privilege to coach his older brother, Cole, who was a phenomenal, phenomenal teammate in our program. He's now in dental school and is going to be a great dentist. And... You know, Hunter came to our program early in his high school career. His mom and dad were kind of like, I think our younger son's pretty good. Mm -hmm. We watch his freshman video. Yeah, he's really good. <laughs> and, you know, you fast forward and you go through and you become the number one quarterback recruit in the country or number two, depending on the service. Mm -hmm. And you went through it just with your right. son. Recruiting now could be a tsunami. It, it, is, it is crazy. I think they handled it really well as a family. He went down, played last year for a great friend of mine, a Davos Sweeney, and they had obviously a, a terrific year. And... He, they felt as a family it was time for a change. I think our relationship with Cole and the family, Cole being a walk-on and the, and the success he had in our program, I think helped. His familiarity with our program helped. The trust from his parents helped. But most importantly, when he came to campus, Clayton Thorson was his host. And Clayton just turned all the cards over about Nick McCall, how we do things. You know, you go Clayton and Trevor and and and. and um, the list goes on and on. You know, you, you, you've got quarterbacks all over that played for Mick McCall. They got a chance to go going back to Kafka. It's pretty good. You brought it up. We haven't been through a full cycle so far. Do you like the new recruiting rules and the new calendar? You know, June's really tough. June's yeah. really tough. It's tough on the assistant coaches, and it's tough on the kids. The group it's mo the most difficult on, and I, I kind of got after our staff a little bit as our players. You know, we're asking our players to host yeah, a lot right. of that's recruits. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Coach, we try to have two weekends, one in May and one in June. Of course, it morphed into more of those. Yeah. And, and if I could fast forward to next year, we're going to have two weekends. Not for our staff. We get paid for mm -hmm. the players. Yeah, we're asking important. them to host too many recruits too often. I think it's great for the kids without means that we're able to get on campus. I love the class we've got committed, kind of in a little bit of a holding pattern right now. I think there's some great kids that aren't being recruited right now. They're going to have amazing senior years. I think a year ago we recruited too much. We were too full, and we weren't able to go after and get some kids that we really liked off their senior video. Um, but, we're man, we're doing a lot of recruiting. July being dead has got to be yeah. fun, though, right? I would like to create a new thing called Super Dead, <laughs> yeah. where no communication. Nothing. Yeah. Go with your team. We go with our families. The guys go in the weight room, and it's over. You know, it would. I don't know how you do that. I call it Super Dead. You could do it that way. Then yeah. in February. But dead's in good. February and July need to go to that for the sanity of our us to be able to be with our players, our families, and most importantly, but for the players just to be college football players, not the best hosts in Evanston. You know, so it's 
It's always the same kids, too, right? Everybody wants the same kids to do the hosting. Some are pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, and some are, and they keep track. And, and, and a lot of the guys are kind of elbowing each other because uh -huh. they want the meal, but then after doing it two, year, two weekends in a row or three mm -hmm. weeks in a row, they're just tired of it. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, there's a pretty large groundswell, and I don't know how that, I don't think this happens in the coaching world I'm hearing, would like to put the genie back in the bottle and go back to one class recruiting. I just don't know how we do that. Yeah. I don't know how we do that because the third party is going to fill the vacuum. Yeah. But it's hard to juggle two classes. It's a challenge. Last thing before we let you go, the home schedule. What do you think when you look at that? Opportunity. You know, what a great opportunity for our program. It's going to be obviously incredibly challenging. Um, and, you, you, you know, we started some of these, you know, you look at some of these, I think the Duke game was our series started six years ago that we had those conversations, the Notre Dame series started conversations maybe seven, eight years ago. Um, you know, then we go to nine league games, so that added another power five opponent at home. So it, it's def definitely challenging, but, you know, we've talked all about opportunity, and especially at home, people have said this may be our, you know, most eye-appealing competitive schedule at home that we've ever had. I guess that's great for fans. <laughs> I was going to say. That's making me go great. It's all about the fans. It's all about the fans. It's all about the fans. With all due respect, Fitz, you are already going great. Yeah, yeah. no, I know. Uh, you've seen my dad. He's been a white rat since he was 30, so <laughs> yeah. I've overcome a lot. Let's, yeah, with the let's white be rat. honest here. Well, I mean, you know, between the gray and the bald... I mean, I'm. I'm I think we got to go to break. I'm the only one holding up the hair end of the bar over here. Pat Fitzgerald, head coach of Northwestern. Always great to see you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Go, Cats. Uh, thanks. thanks.